The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalova in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this revision session. I am Bati Elvis, about your geology teacher. Geology revision for O-level exam or GC O-level examination. The geology syllabus for GC O-level examination has 14 topics, which for the purpose of this revision has been divided into five phases. Phase one, introduction to geology and solar system, Earth's major features, earthquakes and volcanicity, mineral mineralogy and crystallography. Phase two, tectonism. Under this phase, we'll be looking at surface processes, structural geology, tectonics. Phase three, petrology. In this phase, we shall be treating igneous petrology, sedimentary petrology, metamorphic petrology. Phase four, historical geology, where we shall be looking at paleontology, stratigraphy, and soils. And finally, in phase five, which is applied geology, we shall be looking at economic and applied geology, environmental geology, and map work. The examination has two papers, paper one and paper two. Paper one, this paper lasts for one hour, 30 minutes. And the objective of this paper is to test candidates' ability to define and state basic notions in geology and equally to apply and interpret geological concept. The paper has 50 multiple choice questions. Each question has four suggested responses and only one is correct. Paper two, paper two runs for two hours, 30 minutes. This paper is aimed at testing candidates' ability to apply geological knowledge on real life situation. It has seven essay type questions which are divided into sections A, B, and C. Candidates are expected to answer five questions from this section. Section A has three essay questions where you are expected to answer just two. Section B equally has three short essay questions to answer two equally, and section C has just one question, which is the composing question. Number one carries 40% of the entire examination, while paper two carries 60% of the entire examination. We have just seen the structure of the Cameroon GC ordinary level geology. 
stay connected for revision of phase one, which consists of introduction to geology, its major features, earthquakes, and volcanicity. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polena Lobalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. and UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Nanova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Geology can be defined as the study of the Earth's origin, structure, composition, history, and the processes that gave rise to it. Our structural geology is a multifaceted subject which is related to other science subjects like chemistry, physics. In this case, we have branches such as Geophysics, geochemistry, physical geology, structural geology, paleontology, and stratigraphy. When you study all of these branches, you can specialize in any of the following careers. You can either become a geochemist, a paleontologist, a mineralogist, or a geophysicist. The Earth belongs to a large body called the solar system. The solar system comprises of the sun and everything that orbits around the sun, like the planets, asteroids, comets, and natural satellites. The planets that make up the sun include Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, which are also known as the inner planets. And we also have those called the outer planets, which include Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The Earth is divided into two major shells. The shells which range from the surface of the Earth to the atmosphere to the sky is referred to as the external shells, while those below is the internal shells. The external shell is comprised of the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. The atmosphere is a gaseous layer of the external shells of the Earth, while the hydrosphere consists of the water bodies and the biosphere for some of the living things. In the internal layer of the earth, we have the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust, this is the outermost layer of the lithosphere of the earth. It is subdivided into the continental crust and the oceanic crust. The rocks that make up the continental crust are rich in silicon and aluminium, hence giving it the name Sia, while the rocks that make up the oceanic crust are rich in silicon and magnesium, hence giving the acronym Sima. The crust is separated from the mantle by a discontinuity, which is referred to as the Mohorovicic discontinuity. The mantle. This is the middle layer of the head and is equally subdivided into two the upper mantle and the lower mantle. The upper mantle, the mantle is rich 
in one predominant rock type, which is peridotite. And this rock has a density of about five to six grams per cm cube. The boundary that separates the mantle from the core is about 2,900 kilometers. And this boundary is referred to as the Gutenberg discontinuity, the core. The core is divided into outer and inner core. The outer core is molten, the inner core is solid, and composed of nickel iron alloy, hence giving it the acronym NIFE. The drugs that make up the core have a density of about 13 grams per cm cube. The core, the outer core and the inner core are equally separated by a boundary layer or a discontinuity which we call Lehmann's discontinuity. The egg is a dynamic body characterized by so many movements. And one of these movements is earthquakes. Earthquakes are sudden trembling or shaking of the earth crust, which is as a result of accumulated energy that has been stored in rocks. The study of this earthquake movement is referred to as seismology. And that scientist or the geologist who specializes in studying this earthquake movement is a seismologist. When earthquakes occur, the rock suffer stress and strain. The point within the earth where the earthquake is generated is the focus. Then the point directly above the focus is the epicenter. The plane where movement takes place is called the fault plane. What causes earthquakes? Earthquakes can be caused by tectonic movements, volcanism, collapse of mines, and by artificial explosion during excavation in, in quarries. Types of seismic waves. There are three types of seismic waves, namely primary or P waves, secondary or S waves, low or L waves. P and L waves, or primary and secondary waves, are collectively known as body waves, while low or L waves are known as surface waves. How can we measure earthquakes? We can measure earthquakes based on the energy that earthquake releases and the intensity of the damage that earthquake will cause. And so we have two scales used for measuring earthquakes. One is the Richter scale, and the other is the modified mechanics intensity scale. The Richter scale measures the magnitude of the earthquake, while the mechanics scale measures the intensity of the earthquake. The instrument actually used for measuring an earthquake is a seismograph. And I want to add, let you know that there are two types of seismograph. There is a seismograph that measures the north-south movement of wave is the vertical, and the west-east movement of wave is the horizontal. The record of the earthquake waves made by the machine, the instrument is called the seismograph. We can see. We can see the instrument from recording the earthquake and the record made by the instrument, which is the seismograph and the seismograph. Classification of earthquakes. Earthquakes can be classified based on their depth. And so, based on this criteria, we have three types of earthquakes. We have shallow focus earthquakes that range from a depth of zero to 70 kilometers, intermediate earthquakes that range from a depth from 70 to 300 kilometers, and deep focus earthquake that range from a depth of 300 to 700 kilometers. Of the numerous earthquakes that occur on the Earth's surface, geologists or volcanologists have decided to group them into three major groups. The first group of earthquake is called the Second Pacific Belt of Earthquake, 
which occupies about 70% of all the earthquakes that occur on the Earth's surface. The second group is the Mediterranean Himalayan earthquake belt, which constitute about 29% of all the world's earthquakes and are located in this zone. And the last 1% of earthquake as recorded by seismologists is occurring in the North and East African rivers and around the mid atlantic Ridge and also around the San Andreas. Earthquakes have a lot of damages. These include ground rupturing and collapse of buildings, tsunamis, they come along with fire that destroy, mass movement, and permanent displacement. How can we predict earthquakes? We can predict an earthquake by tilting on the ground surface or by increase in the radioactive isotope noticed around us. Then, how, if we can predict, then we can also look for a means of controlling or managing this earthquake. So we can manage earthquake by building earthquake resistant buildings and making, putting in place emergency prepared plan for the population to the case an earthquake occurs. Earthquakes are often associated with volcanic activities. A vo volcanism is a process by which magma rises through the crust and emerges at the surface as lava. As it gets to the surface as lava, it comes with a shape which is described as a volcano. A volcano is a hill or mountain formed by the accumulation of lava and pyroclastic material. A volcano has three characteristics. One, the mamati chamber. Two, the vent. Three, the crater. Magma is a molten silicate melt, and it has the following properties. If magma has a silica composition which is less than 55, it means that magma is a basic magma. But if the silica content is greater than 65, it means it's acidic magma. If the temperature of magma is between 1,000 to 1,200 degrees Celsius, that magma is basic. Whereas if the temperature ranges from 600 to 800 degrees Celsius, that magma is acidic. If the viscosity of magma is low, it means that magma is basic. If, that, if the viscosity is high, it is an acid magma. If the magma has a low gaseous content, it means that magma is basic. Whereas if the gaseous content are very high or is very high, then the magma is acidic. If the density of magma is high, it means the magma is basic. Whereas if it is low, is low, it is acidic. If magma is effusive or quiet, that magma is basic. But if magma is explosive or violent, that magma is acidic. There are so many types of volcanic eruptions, which will group them into three. Three main. One, magmatic eruptions. Two, phreto-magmatic eruptions. And three, phreatic eruptions. Magmatic eruptions can be exemplified by the Hawaiian, the Strombolian, the Volcanian, the Pelian, and the Vesuvian. During the eruption of, an, of a volcano, there are some products that are given. And these products are grouped into three. One, solid products, which are mainly pyroclastic material. And these pyroclastic materials have been classified based on their grain size. So those pyroclastic materials that whose grain size range from, which grain size is less than two millimeters are called volcanic ash. Those with grain size between two to 64 millimeters are referred to as volcanic lapilli or cinders. While those with, with grain size greater than 64 millimeters are referred to as volcanic blocks or bombs. The main liquid product of a volcanic eruption 
is lavender. While the gases that are ejected during the volcanic eruption include water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen chloride, methane, and carbon monoxide. There are two major types of landforms that accompany a volcanic eruption. Those that are formed within the earth as a magma solidifies within the earth are referred to as intrusive landforms, and they include seals, dikes, batholiths, plutons, stocks. Why? If the magma gets to the surface of the earth and solidifies and produces landforms, those landforms are referred to as extrusive landforms. A typical case of an extrusive landform is the Cameroon volcano, which is a series of volcanoes. This Cameroon volcanic line consists of the ocean continent segment, example, Mount Cameroon, the oceanic sediment, example, Mount Bioko, and the continental segment, example, Mount Oku, which stresses, stretches right up to Nigeria and ends around the B, B Plateau. And the other half of the stretch comes back in Cameroon, around the Mandara Mountains. Hence, when we look at it, you see that it gives us a wide shape of the Cameroon volcanic line. Benefits of a, volcan of a volcanism. Volcanism has a lot of benefits. One, the geothermal energy is being produced. When volcanism occurs, fertile soils are produced for agriculture. Some mineral deposits are produced. Economic minerals that can be extracted and mined. We have hard rocks that are used for different construction purposes. And we have pyroclastic materials for road surfacing and even feeding up foundations. This, we cannot end the story of volcanism without saying that it has its hazards. And these hazards uh, include lava flows, landslides, pyroclastic flows, mud flows, or lahars. A typical case is the Likumba lahar and the toxic exhalation. Toxic gases are being ejected into the atmosphere, which are harmful to plants and animals. When lava solidifies on the earth and form these solid products, they have in them certain crystals which we call minerals. A mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic homogeneous solid with a definite chemical composition and an order atomic arrangement. This therefore means that things like petroleum or other artificial or synthetic materials produced as mineral are not mineral because petroleum first is a liquid. It will not be, it will not be inside this definition. So what put minerals together? The crystals of a mineral are held together by the following bonds. One ionic bond, example, is in a mineral halide. Two covalent bonds, example, in a mineral diamond. And finally, metallic bonds, example, in a mineral gold. Minerals exhibit variation in their composition. And we start to find out why do they have this variation in their composition? And the reasons are just simple. One, presence of impurities can cause the mineral composition to change. The ion, ionic substitution can also cause the mineral composition to change. And polymorphism can also cause the mineral composition to change. Minerals have certain characteristics which can be used to identify them, which in mineralogy we describe it as the physical properties of mineral. This include the color of the mineral, which is a reflection of white light, the streak, which is the powdered color of the mineral, the luster, the crystal form and habit, the mineral cleavage or the planes of breakage of the mineral, the mineral fracture, the hardness of the mineral, the specific gravity or density of the mineral. Some minerals exhibit magnetic properties. Minerals react with dihydrochloric acid. And some minerals can be identified by, the, by their tastes, their odor, and by just feeling them. 
It's worthy of note that there's a standard scale which mineralogists use to measure the hardness of mineral. And that scale is referred to as the most scale of hardness, which has 10 standard minerals. So the all other minerals, they are being, their hardness is measured from this scale. Classification of minerals. All the minerals that exist within the earth have been grouped with two major groups. We have the silicate minerals, and the silicate minerals include the nesosilicate, e.g., olivine, the sorosilicate, e.g., epidote, the cyclosilicate, e.g., beryl, the ionosilicate, which we have here, the pyroxenes and the amphiboles, the phyllosilicate, biotide, and the muscovite. Biotide, we see them every day where we go around with some black spot like broken bottles, and the shiny ones are muscovite. And then we have the tetrosilicate, typified by quartz and orthoclase. The non-silicate group consists of the carbonate minerals, example is calcite, the oxide minerals, example hematite, the sulfide minerals, example galena, and the sulfate mineral, example gypsum. Phosphate minerals, example apatite, and then we have the native elements. Here we have those minerals that are metallic in nature, e.g. silver, gold, and copper. There are other minerals which are referred to as metalloid. A typical case here is astatine. And those that are non-metallic, a typical example is diamond and graphite. Minerals are made up of crystals. The study of crystals is crystallography. Crystallography is the study of the growth, shape, and physical character of crystals. A crystal, therefore, is a three-dimensional body bounded by flat surfaces arranged in a definite plane, giving an impression of the internal arrangement of the atoms which constitute that mineral. How are crystals formed? Crystals can be formed through the following processes. One, crystallization, where we have quartz, as you can see there, we have precipitation and evaporation, and evaporation where we have calcite, and sublimation, where we have a typical mineral soil form. Crystals exhibit certain external characteristics which help us in identifying them. These include a crystal face, which could either be like or unlike, a crystal edge, a solid angle, and a crystal form, which could either be open or closed. Types of closed forms, we have cube, octahedron, and dodecahedron. And then types of open form, we have the pyramid, the prism, and the dome. Crystals exhibit symmetry, and there are three principal types of symmetry in crystals. We have the plane of symmetry, axis of symmetry, and a center of symmetry. Based on the crystal symmetry, we have crystallographic axis, axial axis, and elements of symmetry. And using this criteria, Crystals have been put into systems, and these systems include the isomeric system, the hexagonal system, the monoclinic system, the trigonal system, the autonomic system, and the triclinic system. We have come to the end of revision phase four, phase one, which include topics, introduction to geology, and the solar system, earth major features, volcanicity and earthquakes, mineralogy and crystallography. Stay tuned for revision questions and answers. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons, 
taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalobalyunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Question one. A sudden shaking of the earth's cross, of the cross, that lasts for a few seconds, is described as A, volcanism, B, tsunami, C, earthquakes, D, tectonics. We take a few seconds, we reflect, and we choose the answer. We come back, we look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C, earthquakes. Earthquakes, as we know, there are sudden shaking of the earth crust that lasts for a few seconds. Now, tsunamis are earthquakes that are instead generated in the ocean. Volcanism is not sh sudden shaking of the earth crust. And tectonics is equally not sudden shaking of the earth crust. Therefore, the perfect or correct answer then is C, which is earthquakes. Question two, choose from the options below the right order in which seismic waves are recorded by a seismograph. A, S wave, P wave, L wave. B, P wave, L wave, P wave. C, P wave, S wave, L wave. And D, L wave, P wave, S wave. We reflect for a few seconds and choose the correct answer. When we come back, we'll see the correct answer. Remember, you have to give the arrival of waves at the seismological station. Our correct answer is C, P wave, S wave, L wave. We know that the first wave to be recorded at the seismological station is the P wave, followed by S wave, and then finally L wave. B, A cannot be correct because the first one that arrives is the S wave, which is not correct. The first one that gets to the recording station is the P wave, not S wave. And so A is not correct. B, we have arrival of P waves, and then L wave, and then P wave again. That already takes off B among the choice of answers. And then D, L wave, P wave, S wave is a reverse order. They, we realize that the order has been jumbled up. So stay, stick to the fact that P waves are the first to arrive at the recording station, followed by S, and then finally L waves. Study the sketch beside, which shows a section of the earth and use it to answer questions three to five. Question three, the layers represented W, X, Y, and Z respectively are called, remember you are looking at the diagram which shows the internal structure of the earth for you to identify the layers which are, being, which are now represented by those letters. So A, continental cross, Oceanic cross and mantle. B, upper cross, mantle, lower cross. 
C, coordinator cross, oceanic cross, lithosphere. D, crossed, mantle, outer and inner core. We reflect for a few seconds, and when we come back, we we'll choose the correct answer. Our correct answer is D. The layer W, when we look at it carefully, is the outermost layer of the shell, which is the cross. The layer X is the middle layer, which is the mantle. And when Y is the core, and the Z is the inner core. Therefore, A cannot be the correct answer because W is not a continental cross. We are talking about the layers of the cross, not the layers of the earth. Take note, the internal structures of the earth which has cross, mantle, and core. Question four. The composition of layer Z in the figure beside is A, silicon and aluminum, silicon and magnesium, Solid iron and nickel, D, silicon, aluminum, and iron. We reflect for a few seconds and then we'll come back to choose the correct answer. Our correct answer is C, solid iron and nickel. For you to be able to interpret this question, you must first of all know the layer represented by the letter Z. And that layer is the core. When you know that the Z is the core, then the principal elements in the core is iron and nickel, which we saw, I would say it is acronym nickel, nifel. Silicon and aluminum is instead for the continental cross, which gives it the acronym CR. Silicon and magnesium is instead of the oceanic cross, which gives it the name CIMA. Silicon, aluminum, and iron does not, does not fall in any of this. So the trap was to see whether you understand the layer of the earth very well and their composition. Question five. The boundary separating layer X and Y on the figure is A, Lehman's discontinuity, B, Morovicic discontinuity, C, Conrad's discontinuity, and D, Gutenberg's discontinuity. We reflect for a few seconds, and when we come back, we we'll choose the correct answer. Our correct answer is D, Gutenberg's discontinuity. To answer this question, the first thing that has to come to your mind is, what does X and Y represent? Which layer? When you know the layer, then you can know the discontinuity that exists between them. So our layer X is the mantle, our layer Y is the core. And so therefore, the layer that separates the mantle and the core is the Gutenberg's discontinuity. Lehmann's discontinuity separates the inner core and the outer core, while Morovicic discontinuity separates the cross and the mantle, and Conrad's discontinuity separates the oceanic and the continental cross. Question six, in which major layer is soil formed based on the diagram there. That diagram shows the different layers of the earth. So A, layer A only. B, layer B only. C, layer C and D. And D, layer A and B only. We take a few seconds to choose the answer. When we come back, we see the correct answer, all of us. Our correct answer is layer A. And what does A on the diagram that represents? A represents the continental cross. 
Remember, they are still testing your ability or the whether you understand fully the internal structure of the end and the layers. So you should be very careful. You should be very careful. Pay attention, master the layers and the discontinuities. So in layer B only, layer B is the oceanic cross. You cannot have soils there. Layer C and D, we are already into the mantle and the core. And layer A and B, we cannot have the oceanic cross and the continental cross. So the best answer where we can, the best answer which tells us where we can have soils formed is a continental cross. We have rocks that undergo wedge. Question seven. Which type of seismic wave is represented at point Y on the figure besides? A, primary waves. B, real surface waves. C, secondary waves. D, love waves. We pause for a few seconds and get the correct answer. When we come back, we'll see the correct answer together. Our correct answer is C, secondary waves. Look at the position Y. The position Y record the second group of waves that are recorded by the seismological center. And so therefore, the second wave that gets the recording station are the secondary waves. Love waves are the last to arrive, and primary waves are the first to arrive. Rayel is another way of calling love waves. Question eight. What is the time of arrival of seismic wave type X? A, two minutes. B, 2.5 minutes. C, three minutes. D, 3.5 minutes. We take a short pause, reflect, choose the correct answer, and then we'll come back, we'll see the correct answer together. Our correct answer is B, 2.5. Their knowledge of mathematics is brought in here. When you are using how to interpret graphs, you have to extrapolate from the vertical and the horizontal. So to get the answer for this question, you go to the horizontal axis and look at where X is, and you extrapolate up to make X, and you realize that if you extrapolate carefully, it's exactly at the point in between two and three. And the half of two and three is 2.5. So that's why B is our correct answer. From the diagram below, name the structures leveled E and F respectively. A, dike and seals. B, faculty and seals. C, bartholin and seal. D, transgressive seals and dikes. Pause, we'll come back, we'll get the correct answer. Our correct answer is A, dike and seals. This is because there's, there was a key word there to guide you to choose a correct answer, which is respectively, that is starting from E to F. Be very careful. Anytime you get into the exam or you hear respectively, always know the one that comes first before the one that follows. So the correct answer is dike. E is a dike, and the F is a seal. Take note, don't make this same mistake. Two minerals with the same composition, but different crystal forms are described as A, sodomorphs, B, isomorphs, C, polymorphs, D, idiomorphs. Take a few seconds. When we come back, we look at the correct answer together. Okay. Our correct answer is C, polymorph. We know that polymorphism is the existence of two of the same mineral with the same composition, but different physical appearance. So the morphism is a false shape. Iso are the same shape. So poly is different shape, but the same composition. 
And IGO is just to distract you. There's nothing like IGO morphism. Question 11. Crystals are classified into crystal systems based on A, crystallographic axis and axial angles, crystal sy symmetry elements and parameters, parameters and crystallographic notations, crystallographic axis and parameters. We pause for a few seconds and when we come back, we see the correct answer. The basis for class, our correct answer is A, crystallographic axis and axial angle. The basis for classifying crystals into crystal system is using their crystallographic axis and axial angle, nothing else. These are type questions. One, define the following terms. Magma, volcanicity, volcano, Viscosity of magma, B, outline the products of volcanic eruptions. Magma is a molten silicate melt found within the Earth's interior, while volcanicity is the process by which magma rises through the crust and emerges at the surface as lava. A volcano is a hill or a mountain formed by the cooling of lava and the viscosity of magma is the resist internal resistance of magma to flow. Like the products of volcanic eruptions. The products of volcanic eruptions are solid products which include ash, volcanic bombs, volcanic blocks, tufts, and lapilli. The liquid product is basically lava, and the gaseous products include water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen chloride, methane, and carbon monoxide. Question two, define an earthquake. List three major earth layers. C, what is the difference between a seismograph and a seismogram? D, list two types of seismic waves. And E, what do you understand by the focus of an earthquake? An earthquake is a sudden shaking or trembling in the earth caused by the abrupt release of slowly accumulated energy stored in rocks. The three major layers of the earth's interior include the crust, the mantle, and the core. A seismograph is an instrument that detects and records seismic waves while a seismogram is the record obtained from the seismogram. Please take note, these two terms are always confusing. The seismograph is the instrument, the seismogram is the record. These two types of seismic waves, primary waves and secondary waves. The point within the earth where the earthquake is where the earthquake actually originates is the focus. Question three: Define the following terms as used in geology: crystal, solid angle, mineral. B. List three physical properties of a mineral. C. Name three locations we can on where we can find pyroclastic cones. And D. Give two types of major intrusions. Number one, a crystal is a three-dimensional body bounded by flat surfaces arranged in a definite plane. A solid angle is an angle formed by the intersection of three or more faces. A mineral is a naturally occurring homogeneous inorganic solid with a definite chemical composition formed by inorganic processes. The physical properties of minerals include color, luster, hardness, strength, specific gravity, and fracture. Remember, you were asked to give us about three. So we are expanding to, so that should in case you cannot recall all, we are just opening you up. There are many. Question C, 
Name three places we can find pyroclastic cones. The three locations we can find pyroclastic cones are Limbe, at the Centenary Stadium, Batoke, Jombe, Lum, and two types of major intrusions include Bartholith, Lacolith, Stoke, Plutons, and Bosses. But remember, I have asked for two. So you have the last to know more. We have come to the end of phase one of our revision. Of our revision. Our next revision phase will be on tectonism. See you in the next revision phase.